Hello students, welcome to Statics, I'm Dr. Stewart. Today we're gonna to do an example for shear and moment diagrams using integrals. Uh, this example is example 7.9 coming from Hibbler's Statics book. For those of you who haven't, please hit that subscribe button as well as click the bell so that you can get uh, notified when the newest videos come online. In this example, we're asked to draw the shear and moment diagrams for the given beam. Let's analyze the beam. The beam has a distributed load of four kilonewtons per meter applied to it from point B to the end of the beam. We're given the dimensions of our beam and then we also can see that we have a support at A and a support at B that we need to replace. Let's start solving this problem by crafting a free body diagram for this beam. Where we free the body from its constraints, we replace the supports with the reactions. The simplest thing to do is just to draw a straight line putting our two points A and B. We put our distributed load of four kilonewtons per meter, which we could replace with a single concentrated force, which is equal to the four kilonewtons per meter times the distance that it runs over, which is two meters, giving us eight kilonewtons. We also replace the support at A with the reaction AY and the support, oh, excuse me, this is, actually point B, and the support at point B with a reaction BY. Looking at this diagram, we have two unknowns, AY and BY, that we need to find. Let's craft equations of equilibrium. Let's start with summing the forces in the Y direction. When we do that, we'll find negative AY plus by minus eight is equal to zero. Let's then do the sum of the moments in the body. We could choose either point A or point B. In this example, we choose point B. And when we do that, we, found, we find a moment Ay times four minus eight times one is equal to zero. Okay. So now we have two equations, and in those equations, there are two unknowns, so we can rearrange and solve for our unknowns. If we take the second equation, we'll find Ay is equal to two kilonewtons. If we plug that in to the first equation, we can solve By, which is equal to 10 kilonewtons. Now that we know everything in our free body diagram, we can start to create the shear force and bending moment diagrams. In creating these diagrams, we want to identify what calculus or what integral equations that we are going to need to use. The first one that we're going to need to use describes the relationship between applied concentrated forces and a step change in the shear diagram. The second equation describes a relationship between distributed load, and the slope of the shear diagram. And then the last equation is the indefinite integration of distributed load so that we can get the equation. So we can actually get what is the equation for the shear force diagram. So let's use these equations and let's build out the diagram that we see here. If we start at our free body diagram at point A, the first thing we encounter is a, val is a, is a load of Ay, so a, a value going downwards by two kilonewtons. So we start at zero, and we step change down by two kilonewtons. We go back to our free body diagram. Between zero and four meters, nothing happens. So we'll stay at a constant value of negative two over that full range. Once we hit four meters, so we actually hit four meters. 
we encounter By. By is upwards, and it has a magnitude of 10 kilonewtons. So we are going to do a step change of 10 kilonewtons, step change, to get us to a value of 8 on our shear diagram. Right? Remember, this is we're using this equation that gives us the step change. All right? So now let's see what happens that just to the right of point four. What, is it, what, what do we encounter? Well, we encounter our uniform distributed load of four kilonewtons per meter, right? With that distributed load, it's going to cause us to have an equation. So we'll want to, uh, uh, well, there's two ways that we can deal with this distributed load. One thing is the distributed load is equal to the slope of our diagram. So wherever we are, we know we're at point eight. From point four to point six, we are going to have a slope downwards equal to that distributed load of negative of, of negative four um, kilonewtons per meter. Right, that is the slope in that region. Now beyond the slope, we also want the equation, and that's where this this last one comes into play. If we want the equation that describes the shear force, we're going to need to plug in the distributed load, and we're going to need to solve for some unknown C. So let's do that. Let's do that. All right? We will plug in our distributed load. We'll integrate to find negative 4 times x plus C. We'll take a known position, so we know at 4 meters, the value or the magnitude of the shear force is 8. If we also plug the 4 meters in the equation, we can solve for the unknown C. We do that, we find C is equal to 24. So our shear force equation is negative 4x plus 24. This equation is going to be very useful. Because we're going to plug it in when we're creating our moment diagram. We need it. And then lastly, we'll want to cr create a table just like this that describes our x position, any step changes we might have of shear force, and the value of the shear force measured just to the right in our diagram. We want to be able to accurately craft this table because it can be on your exam. All right, so we've got our shear diagram. Now let's craft our moment diagram. The moment diagram is something that arises from the shear diagram. It arises if we look at this following equation, where the shear force diagram, the shear force itself, that diagram changing with x, that that shear force is equal to the slope of the moment diagram. So as long as we know the shear force, as long as we have the shear diagram, we know how the slope is changing in our moment diagram. Another equation that's going to be useful for us is the equation to actually find the equation for the shear I mean, for the moment diagram, to actually find what the equation is, m of x, right? We do that by performing indefinite integration of the shear force and solving for some unknown c. All right, now that we've reviewed the equations, let's get into building this diagram. The first thing we want to do is go back and look at our shear force diagram. In our shear force diagram, we started at zero, and then we instantly jumped up to negative two, and we were at a constant negative two uh, um, kilonewtons from zero to four meters, right? Well, if we take that into consideration in this equation that the shear force is a constant, the, the, the shear force is a constant of negative two, then that means the slope and our moment diagram is negative 2, and so we put a linear slope of negative 2 here, right? And then we can describe this, this line as simply negative 2 times x. That is the line from 0 to 4 meters. That's the line for the moment. Just that simple. 
All right. Now that we've done uh, that portion, now let's look at what happens at uh, four meters in our shear force diagram. At four meters, our diagram changes and we encounter this uh, shear force that's degrading. It starts at eight and it decreases all the way to zero, right? And we actually found an equation for the shear force. We found that equation down here. We found that equation, right? Well, well we can take that equation and plug it in here to note that to, to, to see how the slope of our moment diagram changes as we move with position X, right? Now that's gonna be kind of hard to use. So instead of using that, what we're gonna do is we're going to plug in the shear force equation into this indefinite integral. And then we will find the exact equation for the portion from four to six meters. And this equation is nonlinear. This is going to be a nonlinear equation, right? So once we find it, we probably want to plot it in our calculators. Okay, so let's get started. Let's recall that our shear force between four and six meters is negative four X plus 24. Let's plug that in to this indefinite integral and we'll find that MX is equal to negative two times X squared plus 24 times X plus a C, which is an unknown. To find that C, let's evaluate M at four meters. If we go to our diagram, we'll find, we'll know that it's at negative eight due to the previous line, right? Due to the to, to, due to this line here building, it's at negative eight. So that's the actual value of it. Let's plug in the four meters into the rest of our equations and in, in, in the rest of the equation, and we only have one unknown, C. We solve for that unknown, and now we find that C is equal to negative 72. So our moment equation from four to six meters is negative two times X squared plus 24 times X minus 72. All right, and then we go and we would go and plot that using our calculators to, to create this nonlinear portion here, right? Uh, and we'll find that we started at zero and we end at zero, indicating that the equation we found, the process that we used is accurate. We, we, it seems like we've got a good diagram. The last step is for us to craft a table that summarizes the uh, results of this diagram. We'll put the X position, we'll put the slope of the moment diagram, dm dx, and we'll put the magnitude of the moment, where all of these are measures just to the right of X. So just to the right of zero, just to the right of four, just to the right of six meters, these measurements are taken. Make sure to get some practice filling in this table Maybe you want to pause the video, look at it, and then go back and look at the diagrams just so that you get a good understanding of how to fill it out because it might be on your exam. All right, so we're done with this example. It was pretty straightforward. It takes a little bit of integration, but this is a very, very powerful approach. Uh, make sure to get some more practice. I'm going to try to put another video or two up. I'll see you in the next one.